It is Monday, June 1st, and this is the Ivanography Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Greg McMillan, and I am joined by a good friend who's taking uh, Dave's place tonight, Joseph Ferreira. Hello, Joe. Hey, Greg. How are you? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? I'm doing good. It's been a minute since I've been on a podcast lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we we, uh, we kind of had a little roundtable discussion with uh, you know, Matt Hoffman and Dave and you and I, and we just kind of shot the breeze and uh, yeah. kind of like meeting in a coffee shop, but uh, virtually. So that was nice, yeah. and we were able to catch up a little bit. And um, so this is... Uh, my second YouTube version of the show. Um, the last one, yeah, there was a few little issues with the audio and the video and whatnot, but I thought, you know, I'm going to put it on there anyway. <laughs> and uh, um, That's all right. so, yeah, I mean, I'm learning and I'm, I'm going to see how, how it goes with, uh, you know, the number of views and the, the, the like the time people watch them and things like that. And if it just doesn't pan out, then I won't have to. Uh, I won't have to worry about putting them on anymore. But I'm gonna. I'd like to put them on just to um, kind of show people what we're talking about a little bit here. So, um, well, can I can I just kind of mention a little of my experience with that? Sure. Um, so with our church, I'm a I'm an associate pastor at my church, and I do all the video and audio for uh, the website and. I notice that I have more interaction on Facebook than I do on YouTube. Uh, I still do YouTube mainly because you never know when things are going to pick up and, 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 and do it. So people will think I need to wait for YouTube to take off before I do video. It's like, no, just do video, continue to do video. And then eventually when they, when they find you, they're like, Oh, look at all these videos. I'm going to go back and watch all these videos. The next thing you know, you start seeing this uptick of, of views. So yeah, just do yeah. it all. Yeah. Um, I think last the last show probably shouldn't have been my first one because it was an hour and a half and it was all about WWDC, <laughs> which <laughs> really has nothing to do with what the podcast is about. So... <laughs> You don't um, never know when somebody might find that interesting going, that's what that was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> but um, this week we are going to continue our series on the um, uh, discussion that was started with uh, when, when Matt Hoffman came in and covered for me, uh, him and Dave, they started the camera series, I guess you could call it, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and they talked about macro. Now, no, the iPhone doesn't have a macro camera, but there's a lot that you could do with macro with the iPhone. So that's kind of where they went with that. And um, we're going to talk about the wide camera. Uh, you know, there's, depending on which iPhone you have, it, it could have one, two, or three cameras. And, or, or if you count the, the, the front-facing camera, that's four. And yeah, and you and I both have three cameras on the back and one on the front, obviously. And, um, you know, we're going to look at the wide camera. Some people call it the 1X because it's it's the one times or whatever. But uh, I always like to call them what Apple calls them. So I'm going to stick with the wide camera. And, you know, when I refer to the telephoto, I'll say telephoto or the, or the ultra wide or whatever. Um, so they obviously have like it's not just lenses, it's cameras. And um, obviously they have different apertures because the, the wide camera is the one that has the best quality. And um, uh, like, do you have a favorite one that you like to use, Joe? Actually, the wide is my favorite. I, right. I, tend, I tend to go for the wide because it looks more natural. Yeah. Telephoto. Yeah. It's good to be able to go in, but um, the, the super wide is not really my favorite unless I'm doing, uh, unless I'm really trying to pull something off. I typically will go with the wide. Yeah. 
And um, now Sebastian DeWitt from Halide, his favorite camera is the telephoto. And I can, I'm starting to see why, because I'm starting to use it a little more, but um, that's for another show. <laughs> well, we'll, yeah, we'll it, it doesn't make you look fat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know I should have yeah. said my favorite was a selfie camera, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, and, and you use, a, a, you do a lot of video. Yeah. So I'm sure that makes a big difference too. Like, uh, I'll you know, tell you different, different looks and whatnot. The uh, the most I use is the wide angle. Um, when I do, let's let's say I'm in a situation where I have a, uh, I'll have two cameras, uh, and, and they're actually iPhones. Uh, so I'm using two iPhones, uh, iPhone sixes for uh, camera angle one, camera angle two, and then I'll use my iPhone 11 for and use the wide uh, the actually the super wide to be able to see everything in close quarters. So it's almost like you're stepping back, but you're actually really close. Uh, it yeah, does yeah. look a little funky, but it, it kind of helps in that situation. If you're going to use the wide angle, I'd have to pull the camera back in order to fill the frame. Definitely with a telephoto, it has to go way back. But that's right. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, what I okay. So the one thing I like about the wide is, and and this goes for just about any iPhone, is that the the aperture is you know the largest out of the the camera systems that are on the phone, and um, so on the twelve Pro Max that I have, the aperture is actually f one point six, and I think that's the widest they've ever put um on the camera system so um i'm really pleased with the uh you know with the quality of the uh images that i get with that wide, yeah, with that aperture. wide aperture and yeah and, uh, oh, i'm, I'm oh, echoing i'm echoing <laughs> oh, i can hear myself um, okay i i'm trying to pull up what the uh aperture is is it 1.8 I believe it's 1.8 on the 11 Pro, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it, it's, it, it gives you really good image quality. And uh, to that point, Moment says, if you're going to put the, <clears throat> excuse me, the telephoto uh, lens that they have, um, and let's see, how does that go? Put the, oh, if you want to make a, a really wide, wide image, like kind of like the ultra wide instead of using the ultra wide camera put their wide angle lens on the on the wide camera of the iPhone and this is going to sound convoluted but um the reason to do that is to get better image quality with the better aperture right. and uh i was doing that and it, i got to admit i found the images to be a little softer than with the ultra wide with no lens on it even though the the aperture is not as good on the ultra wide. It just didn't have the clarity uh, or the sharpness. Um, well, you're you're and, you're taking and putting a lens on top of a lens. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I mean, and, and I never thought I would do this, but I sold my wide angle, my moment wide, and my moment tele because yeah. I just wasn't going to use them, um, and for that reason. So, you know, there's a guy that I work with who bought an iPhone and um, saw that I was using these lenses and really was interested in them. So I sold them to him and, he, and he's really loving, you know, the, the fun that he's having with them. But um, so I think the most common use as far as photographers go for a wide angle camera is the, uh, um, you know, the landscape. And of course, that's that's my favorite thing to shoot. And um, I'm going to just pull up some images here to show the difference between what a landscape would look like from the, um, well, at first I'll start with sunsets. How's that? Okay, you go. go like this. Can't Can't go wrong with a good sunset. Yeah, that's right. 
Okay. So there's, I thought that would have been bigger. There, there's a sunset with the wide. Oops. There we go. What am I doing here? Okay. There's a sunset with the ultra wide camera. Yeah. Uh, you get a lot of the sky in. You get more of that the water. Really in. good. Yeah. Thanks. Um, that's actually the one that I actually chose to post on Instagram. And nice. then you got the the wide. Right. Uh, you know it. You get there's birds here in the sky, yeah. and they're they're nice and clear. You can see them. Um, I, you know, it, it's it's not bad. It just for a sunset to me, it just didn't show enough. And then, oops. And there's the telephoto. Um, it has the worst of the three cameras for as far as aperture goes. So the sky is not as, to me, it's just not as clear. It's a little more modeled, and more muddy looking. Um, right. But uh, it looks uh, like it's compensating. Yeah. Yeah. And and. The only one of these that I've edited is the ultra wide. Yeah, um, the, the ultra know, wide. I'll tell you from from what I'm seeing right here, and this is what everybody else is saying. It looks really good. It it, it it's a good way of being able to utilize the almost fisheye look, and yeah. uh, it, 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 the the clouds lend towards making it look good. Whereas if you had people standing there, it'd be like, eh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it almost gives a 30,000 foot look to it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and that the other side of the bay is, I'm going to guess it's probably maybe a mile away. Maybe not quite a mile. No, I don't think it's a mile. It's, it's probably about a half a mile. But uh, yeah, there's the telephoto. Um, so the telephoto actually gives you more of what you, um, what you almost look like you see with your eyes, um, yes. as opposed to being something, oops, you know, oh, that's the telephoto there. I'm getting so mixed up, but anyway, um, well, that's the difference between them anyway. So there, there's the, the, the telephoto, the ultra wide, and then the wide, um, yeah. Just the wide has the best aperture, so it's going to give you the best image quality. And as far as angle of view goes, it's okay. But in this case, um, you know, the ultra wide definitely was the one to give the better image. So that's um, uh, that is uh, the sunset. This is my vehicle. The Rav. Uh, yeah, it's the blue Rav on Instagram. <laughs> Shameless plug. Uh, now, this is with the telephoto. And that just to good. show you the, what the optics do when you go to the wide, it, it just changes the whole look of the, of the image. Um, yeah. you know, it really emphasizes the, 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 far, the part that's closest to the, to the viewer. Excuse me. In this case, it's the front corner of the, of the vehicle. And uh, it just gives it a whole different look. Uh, as opposed to the telephoto. So um, when I shoot it, when I shoot the RAV, I kind of like to use the telephoto just because it looks a little more natural, unless I'm going for, you know, kind of a funky look, but. Um, the wide, the wide will have a, uh, almost it's, it's starting to get that fisheye look towards. Yeah. A little distorted. Yeah. little distorted. The, the, the wide is good for groups, maybe far away. Uh, telephoto is really good for individuals because you're not widening their faces. Um, and so yeah. that looks more natural than the wide angle does. Um, but it still looks good because it, it, it you're getting, you're getting a different view and it, it's adding some character to the, the, the other one just looks like it's safe. This one's yeah, yeah. edgy. That's safe. That's more edgy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And, you know, I guess it all depends on the look that you're after too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So then I was at a river, a local river, and this is 
with the wide camera. So you're going to get a little more of the river in there, more of the sky, you know, again. And, and this is a, a typical landscape um, example. And then there's with the telephoto. Yeah. And I don't know how, if you can see it very well, but the quality of the image, like, like the image quality of the trees and stuff is just not as crisp and clean. It, as yeah, the, it, as it's it almost there. like, it's almost like their uh, programming went to try to define the leaves and it's not there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just a little, you know, that, okay. So the aperture of the telephoto camera is 2.4 and that's quite a difference between 2.4 and 1.6. Like, um, Oh, and I should note too, that on the 12 pro max, at least the, um, uh, focal, no, what was I going to say? Oh, the sensor, the sensor is actually larger. Oh, um, nice. Loud yeah, loud. like it's, and, and, okay. So when it came to deciding which phone to buy, when I was getting my, the 12 pro, whether to get just the pro or just the max, the pro has a two point, what is it? Um, on the telephoto, it has a 2.0, I think. Yeah, a 2.0 aperture. So, it, and on the Pro Max, it's 2.2. Hmm. The trade off was on the Max, it has a 65 millimeter equivalent focal length, whereas on the Pro, it's 52, I think. So the reach doesn't have quite as much reach, um, okay. you know, and, and this is all supposed to be about wide angle, but I mean, we're getting into everything here, but um, so with the wide camera, I went for the larger sensor size, plus it's stabilized within the body, not just the lens. And that, that was kind of the deal maker too, for me, um, you know, and it's the only one that has that that kind of stabilization none of the other phones have ever had it now they're saying next year they're all going to have it all the cameras are going to have in body stabilization the ultra wide the wide and the telephoto on on the pro models wow and and i think even on the like the irregular iphone 13 if that's what they call it i think it's going to have the same sensor stabilization 13 i don't know what do you think no you don't think so? They had iOS 13. Yeah, but nobody cares about the operating systems. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Mac, uh, us- Mac users are going to use it no matter what. <laughs> so do you think they'll jump to 14 or or just 12S? They, or or they, they'll probably call it the iPhone Lucky or something like that. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just to me, like, yeah, buildings they 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 skip the thirteenth floor. It's a maintenance floor. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I I could see them on the off chance saying, "Well, we don't want it to be 13. Blah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. The only thing that I'm in my gut that I'm really certain that they're going to do is give give us portrait video. In, and it may just be the pro models. I don't know, but I, I think they're going to give us portrait video because if you know, at WWDC they said there's going to be portrait video in FaceTime calls in iOS 15. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if they can, if they can basically display that video without recording it, like in FaceTime, you can't record FaceTime. If they can display that video, they might have the processing power in the next next iPhone to actually record with it. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. And I think that's going to be the one feature that, you know, they say coming in the fall or coming later this fall, just like portrait mode was when the seven came out, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, back to the cameras. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. <clears throat> and... and the last video, I tried to cut out all coughing and all that nonsense. I'm just going to leave it in this time. It's going <laughs> to, I'm going to take the marks. This is a non-edit show. 
That's right. I'm going to take the Mark Sadowski route and just what you see is what you get, baby. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't edit that much out of our shows that we're doing and um, it works out well. We keep it to 30 minutes and we don't edit anything out unless it's uh, so we're, we, we record conversations with missionaries and, other people and some missionaries, they have to either have their faces blurred or you can't say their names or other stuff like that because they're in highly sensitive areas. And, right, uh, yeah, right, yeah. you know, so if there is something that popped up that would cause their lives to be in danger, then I do cut it out. But, you know, there's no, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we're pretty safe here. here. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) If somebody comes after us, it'll probably be an Android user. But uh, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) we like our. um, Oh, yes. Uh, You know, and tangent again, uh, FaceTime will be available on Android phones uh, via the browser with, with a link. You know, you, you you could send someone with an Android phone a link to your FaceTime call. They click on the link and it opens up the call in their browser. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really liking the direction that they're taking with this stuff. Um, now, now, will we get it on uh, on Windows? Uh, yep. PC? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, on, I think it's going to be probably just about any platform. Now, I don't know about the Linux and things like that. Right. But, um, if it if if the browser is compatible, then then it'll work. So that's kind of cool. Something real here. Yeah, I um, realized I didn't change my name. Hold on. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so yeah, back to the cameras. Um, when you're using a wide angle. Uh, Obviously, shooting horizontally will emphasize what you see side to side, um, especially with a landscape. Or like you say, if you if you have a group of people that you're, you're taking a, a, a picture of, and I've done this with my family, uh, and my mom's family is big. Like, there's a lot of them. Okay. What I would do is I, is I would get them to, to – what's that? No, I, I was just glad you clarified that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's uh, large in numbers. <laughs> but what I would do is I would get them to kind of get in a semicircle as mm-hmm. long as they're within range of the viewfinder. And unfortunately, that makes the ones on the ends look a little oh. larger than life because <laughs> yes. that's what wide angle does. And the ones in the middle, they were the lucky ones. They look kind of normal. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, if you I, inverted the, uh, if you inverted, no, how? Okay, let me think. Would it would they be concave when you take a picture of them? Um, I don't know. That All would I be know is that they're stretched out. All I know is that they're stretched out. You know, like yeah. As you go from the center, and then as you go across this way to the edge, they get they get wider. And I've had complaints about people's. Tell them, they tell me they would you would you make me look fat for? <laughs> yeah, uh, the, I just, other, it's the nature of the lens. Yeah, the other thing that you have to be aware of is whether you're taking a picture in portrait or in landscape too. Because let's say you do it in landscape, uh, the middle of like the a uh, one by one format of the of the wide angle will actually be truer than say um a um 16 by 9 the because at even there with the wide angle you're going to get the same thing than you as if it was like a super wide so when you turn it to portrait a lot of times you think oh it's portrait mode i'm going to take a picture of a person but what it what ends up happening is their head ends up being wider at the top than the center of the photo. So what I do yeah. is I take it in landscape, take the picture in landscape, and then I crop it into portrait if I want it to be a portrait. That right. way you're not you're not making their head fat. Yeah, yeah, that's a good tip. Uh, never thought of that, but 
I mean, admittedly, I don't take pictures of people a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, I do like more. I say, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so, speaking of portrait, me and, and that just means the, the the vertical orientation, not portrait mode, as in you know portrait mode that you can do with the phone. But no. yeah. in 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 uh, like a vertical orientation, that's a really good way to do a landscape because. You can get, um, let me pull one up here. You can get a lot of emphasis in the foreground uh, with. Oh, sure. Oh, we're over here. There we are. So this one here, um, it really emphasizes these rocks in the foreground. And I wanted to emphasize them because of the way the, the light from the sun was coming through the trees and it was just creating a, like a dappled effect with the um, rocks, you know, with the shadow and the sun on the rocks and that. And I thought it was really cool. And then, uh, you know, I, I just, and this is completely uh, uncropped. It's, it's, it's edited a little bit just for um, color contrast, things like that. But, um, but, but it's, as far as the framing goes, that's just the way it was shot. And uh, you know, it was, it, it's, it shows because it's a wide angle lens, it shows the um, the vastness of the bay. And on the, I think it's on the right of the frame and way off in the distance are islands. Okay. And, um, and I think that's mainland on the, on the very far right over here. And then mainland over here. And this, this little ridge here, I know yeah. you can't, see this on the audio folks but if you go to youtube you'll see this that's the niagara escarpment oh and wow it runs it runs from the the tip of the bruce peninsula actually it actually goes beyond that it's under the water and whatnot but the tip of the bruce peninsula um all the way down the peninsula through the city that i live in here in owen sound and then right down to niagara falls and and you know the, the niagara falls goes over it and uh <clears throat> it really creates a lot of uh, great photo opportunities for landscapes. Um, but that that's what that's what's off in the distance. But so this vertical orientation, um, when I try to tell somebody how to shoot a landscape, I'll, I'll often um, recommend shooting in vertical like this, just so you can have something in the foreground. Can um, I can I make a guess here? Yeah. You're uh, you're squatted down. You're not standing up straight. Uh, you know what? I think you might be right. Yeah, I think you are correct. A lot of people <laughs> like 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 to be standing up straight to take a picture. That's probably one of the worst ways of doing it, especially if you're trying to do something like this. So you want to squat down and. Uh, and get as not as close to the ground as possible, but alleviate that um, that height so that the rocks become more profound in the bottom of the photo. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you're right. I think I did get down on on my knees on on a big rock that that was right in front of me, and um, you know just to like you say, emphasize that foreground. And, uh, you know, I wasn't concerned about the background because it's just sky uh, or the or the, the trees on the left. Um, there was cars parked just off the frame there. I just made sure they weren't in the frame. And, uh, you know, everything on the right just fell in where it was. But uh, I just thought, and, you know, this was a really windy day. And that's why the water's rippling yeah. as much as it is. But I'm surprised the, the you know, there's not bigger, larger swells in the water, which, um, you know, you know, would, would have made for a, maybe a nice effect too. But, uh, but yeah, it, emphasize the foreground with a wide angle like that. Um, and, and I think it'll give you a lot better landscape photo. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I'll just show another one real quick here. This is, uh, back in the winter time. I don't know if you know what this is, Joe, but this is snow. <laughs> We didn't get any this year. <laughs> I'm, I'm still going to send. We you didn't a get any here in South Carolina. <laughs> no, <laughs> but this was a this was a bitter bitter cold morning, and 
this uh, hoar frost it's called um, develops through the night. And then as soon as the sun comes up, as soon as the sun hits this stuff, it's gone. Wow. So you have to be, you have to be quick to get this stuff on, on anything like the trees in the background have some. So it's very anyway, fine frost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very fragile. Like I think if I touch those branches, it would just fall off. Um, so yeah, so this was, this was after work one morning and that's the only way I'll ever get an early morning pictures of just getting out of work off a night shift. But, um, uh, so this is with the wide camera and this again shows, you know, the, the aesthetics of the image, um, you know, how it looks with the different cameras. Uh, and what I tried to do is get these, this little shrub thing that has the hoar frost on it to take up the same amount of space in the frame with the ultra wide. Mm. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a little more stretched out, but you can see in the background, you know, the, the, the trees on the edges to start to angle because yeah. of the, just the nature of that camera and going back to that. So, the, you know, on the, on the wide camera, they're a little more horizontal, the trees in the corners and that, um, it just natural. doesn't, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure with the telephoto, it would, it would be even more natural looking, but I would have to stand way back across the road just to get this shot. But, um, right. but yeah, there, there's, uh, uh, just the, the difference between the wide and the ultra wide and, um, you know, how it makes the image look again. So, and something else I wanted to mention was doing macro with, my moment macro lens, I could put it over the, over the, uh, I should, uh, stop sharing this for a second. There we go. I, if I put the mo moment macro over the, the wide camera here, as, as opposed to the telephoto here now on any other iPhone, this is the wide and this is the telephoto, but on the 12 pro max, to put the wide down here because the sensor takes up more room and it needed to be away from the corner of the phone. So that's why I'm pointing to this one. So um, to illustrate the difference between the wide and the telephoto when doing macro work, I'll go back to sharing my screen again. Uh, where are we here? Okay, so with the wide, there's a, a little wee daisy. Now, this little daisy is only about maybe a half an inch from one side to the other. There, it's a very small little daisy. And uh, I, I, I plucked it and brought it in. And actually, it's actually sitting on my Bible. That's the black, the black oh. background. And so that's through the wide camera. So you can see the size of it there and, and the amount of magnification you get with a macro lens, right? And you yeah. put it on the telephoto and it just brings everything in that much closer and yeah. uh, g gives you a lot better look at the detail. Um, as far as image quality goes, well, with, with the wide camera, you have a little more depth of field. Um, and I think it's because of, well, gosh, I really got to study this because I'm talking about this in, in the book that I'm writing and Ooh. I, I said I might have to go back and change it when I study it more, but I said that the wide camera will have a little more depth of field than the telephoto. And I said that because that's kind of how traditional lenses work. Right. But I got I, I to gotta do some, I got to do some research on that. But when you look at over in the left side here, see this part of the pedal? Yes, that's the part that part of the pedal is in focus. And you can see just how much of the, uh, you know, the depth of field covers. Right. And, I, and I'm so, I, I apologize for people who are listening to this without seeing it. But what we're looking at is the one of the pedals on the on the on the daisy. There's just a little part of it that's in focus as it comes, you know, off off the center of the flower and, and heads out just because of the angle that it is and all that stuff and the angle that it was captured. And then on the wide shot, yeah, I think there's a little more of the pedal in focus. 
So the depth of field is a little larger. So that's the amount of the um, image that's in focus or whatever. Yeah. So I just sent you a photo. I don't know if you can put it on your computer, um, but it's, it's a flower. Yeah, there it is. Um, and this is a wide angle shot, but I set the focus to be really close and so Mm -hmm. it's this is not a portrait mode this is an actual bokeh effect uh, that the camera that the camera lens is doing naturally and uh, and so you can see what it looks like i i think i you know it may be all right but i think apple would have probably messed it up in portrait mode uh if i tried to do it that way yeah, probably. But you know, that's a really nice bokeh from that lens. Uh, you got the 11 Pro, right? Yeah, I have the 11 Pro. Yeah, so that's an f1.8. Um, the lower the f-stop number, the more blurred the background's going to be from a, a, an image that's focused up close. Yeah. And that is really, uh, th- that's a really nice bokeh effect. From a, so, from a phone, you know? I know, I know. So the way I set this up was um, I used my hand to set the exposure and the focus. Uh, so okay. I, I took the camera, got got my hand in front of it, and, and found where I could focus it sort of the closest. And then I moved the camera in on the flower. The flower's not that big. I moved the flower in and then took the picture. And what it did was it just, it, it took out all the, uh, it, all the um, focus from the background and really set it up on the flower and those, um, the leaves of the flower that are closest to it. And yeah. uh, I, I was really happy with that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a really nice shot. Um, it just, you know, it, it emphasizes what that flower looks like. Whereas if that one wasn't there and all you had was the ones further back, um, you wouldn't really have a good look at it. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I want to really say cool. these flowers were the, the flower uh, petals with uh, the flower itself was probably about the, as wide as a quarter. So these are really small. Oh, wow. That is small. Yes. It's, it's it looks a lot bigger than that. Big. I it, it can be deceiving, but these were really small flowers. Yeah, yeah, that is. Oh, I mean, hey, look at the leaf about down I in know. the lower left corner of the frame. Uh, that that kind of gives you an idea there. Like you, you would think that the either that's a small flower, or that's a really big leaf in the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um. Let's see, is there anything else? This one here kept popping up uh, when I was trying to show other stuff. But this is just another example of a wide angle um, view. Uh, just a, a tree. It's called it's called the summer folk tree in town here. And this tree is on a slant that's probably, oh, I don't know, about 35 to 40 degrees uh, from the ground up and it's just I don't know how it ever got like that I don't think it grew that way I think something must have I'll happened tell you why. to the all yeah. right when you see a tree out in the water who's going to climb on it everybody's going to climb on it and want to jump off of it well if you get a you oh know, yeah I, I, I I'm just saying that you know people would climb on it and next you know it's growing sideways yeah. <laughs> yeah, that 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 could very well be. Uh, and, and you know, funny thing is, is um, okay. So you see how the the water level is there. Yeah. Last year, see those rocks that go around the tree. Mm-hmm. Last year, I'll bet you there was another foot and a half of water in that whole bay. Like the the, the water level was so wow. high in the Great Lakes, and <clears throat> and and this is <clears throat> excuse me, this is Georgian Bay, which is kind of up and off of Lake Huron and 
excuse me, I got to get a drink. <clears throat> um, so this, the, the water level has gone down so much over the last year. And I think it's because uh, it has something to do with last winter. The, 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 the Great Lakes didn't freeze over as much as they had the few years prior to that. So um, yeah, it's it's crazy. That's that's kind of a little side note. Huh. But yeah, this this, this photo um, of the tree, you know, it, it's it just shows you the um, you know the wide angle just gives you a, a, a kind of a sense of distance between the tree and the um, the marina in the background there, and then you know the marina juts out into the bay and the water kind of yeah. goes off around behind that out into the oblivion again. And <clears throat> I, I took this shot because there's a, a light fog on the bay and you can't really see it too well, but it's there. Yeah. I saw that. Um, it, it looked better in real life than it does in a photo, but uh, uh, it probably um, looked closer. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's the other thing about a wide angle too. The ultra wide is even worse, but a wide angle will make things look further away than they really are. Um, yeah. uh, Cause like I mentioned earlier, the telephoto will try to, it, it almost makes things look how they actually look with our eyes. So um, uh, yeah. So that's, I think that was all of them. Yeah. I think we went through them all. So yeah. Um, that is uh, pretty much how a wide angle looks. And and again, if you're just listening to the audio, you're you're missing out. <laughs> you got to go yes. to the YouTube channel. There will be a link in link in the show notes for the video for this, and you'll be able to see you know just what the wide angle can do and what it does. And uh, any more thoughts on the wide angle? No. Uh, what, just, what about with what about with video? Like, is there any any special things about video that? Uh, stand out about with the wide angle well so i i do i primarily do all my video in wide angle mainly uh because it is more forgiving so let's say you're doing video with just the iphone itself you're not using another computer so uh we'll start with that and then i'll, I'll tell you my other process when you want to do the wide angle because the image stabilization is a lot better than the telephoto. You're just going to, because the, the phone can only handle so much. And if you're tilting back and forth, uh, the iPhone can't compensate for that. So the, uh, I use a, um, an Osmo gimbal, uh, mm -hmm. if I can to help with the stabilization and then, uh, I, I keep it on the wide angle because what happens is it's not the true wide. What happens with the videos, they crop in. Yes. And the, reason, and the reason why they crop in is for the image stabilization. So your hand can be doing this floating motion, but what they're doing is they're taking points and taking from the actual crop of the wide angle and stabilizing it. You can do that. Uh, so there's mechanical stabilization and then there's digital stabilization. So when you're doing both, it looks phenomenal. Uh, but the image stabilization, they crop in. So if you, if you turn on your camera, if you're using an iPhone, uh, you're going to be in the photo, uh, mm -hmm. uh, photo mode. Yeah. When you hit video, you're going to see all of a sudden it'll zoom in. And all they're doing is they don't, for video, you don't need the full on 12 mega, megapixels. You only need no. a portion no. of that because 1080p is, um, is what I shoot in. So 1080p uh, doesn't require that full frame. It's just way too much information. Uh, if you're doing 4k, then you may end up using the whole frame, but, uh, you don't need it. So it's going to zoom in. So it's, what it's doing is it's actually taking out all the, um, the curved look of the frame itself and, and you're getting the sweet spot in video. 
So yeah. if you're, if you're going to video, do it in wide angle. Now, the other way I do it is I'm using iPhones as cameras, not as the, um, not as the capture device. So I'm going to make some people's brains kind of like explode a little bit here. Uh, I, I use OBS and there's an app called uh, OBS camera and you load that app onto your iPhone and you can use your iPhone as a, uh, as a, as a webcam. Uh, I take three iPhones. I I'm using iPhone sixes and I, I loaded that app on there. It's about $15. And then I use OBS and I can switch between the cameras as if I'm switching scenes. And I record onto my computer the video. And it's like, you know, my mind's blown because I, I basically, if I have my computer, have the lightning connectors, have the phones, I have a studio in my backpack. I use these microphones to be able to um, to capture the audio, and yeah, my mind's blown. So I same same thing. When you're using OBS camera, you're using actually what it does is it'll it recognizes whether you have one camera or like with my iPhone 11, three cameras, and so it has this thing called the tri camera. I don't know how that works, but I think they're trying to use all of the three cameras, the best features with it. I turn that off and just go with the wide and, um, and just go straight to the, the wide angle. And I'm mm -hmm. able to control the, uh, the exposure, the light, uh, the white balance, everything like that on each individual phone so that they're not different and I can set those and then switch through my scenes and, and be able to create a, a video like I'm sitting there in a studio changing from one camera to another. But I use the wide angle. I don't use the telephoto and I don't I, I typically don't zoom in unless I have to. Uh, but everything is is set up just basically the same way I do video with the iPhone. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Um, going back to your point about the stabilization, I'll never forget that video that you showed us with yeah. the phone stuck to the the, the, the window in your Jeep. <laughs> so I had a coworker that his, he had the iPhone 8 Plus. I think it was the 8 Plus. And I think the 8 Plus had, I don't know if it was a 7 Plus or was it a 6 Plus? One of them had the first gen uh, st stabilization, mechanical stabilization. There was another one. I think that it. was the 6S Plus. I think. So the 6S Plus um, had, it was the first generation of the, the physical camera stabilizer in the phone. And apparently the stabilizer went haywire. And so it was one of the, one of the gear uh, motors was just buzzing away. And if you took a, took a video, it was just like, Ugh. yeah, this, this yeah. whole scene was just crazy and you can hear it trying to do whatever it did, but he ended up having to take that to Apple. And I think he got a new phone or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still have I had that, that somewhere. Yeah. I had that happen to me. I had my eight plus, on a tripod um, and it was a very, very windy day. And when the wind would hit, hit the phone, I was shooting video and the, 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 the pitch would just go like this, um, yeah. you, you know, because it it, it's handle, trying to compensate. Yeah. It can't handle front and back. It can handle up and down and left and right. It can't yeah. do the front and back. It, it just, they, there's, there's no room and it's not set up to do that. So if you're holding the camera, what it's doing is it's just taking within that framework and using, uh, using that shot. And like, I, I, I think it was the iPhone 4S that had the digital image stabilization. And I took video, this was probably six years ago six or seven years ago. 
I took video at my parents' house in California and my brother had, my brothers always use Androids, but I just showed them the video quality and they're like, really? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. They still didn't <clears throat> you know, go for iPhones. I, I don't care, but, um, yeah. but at the time, the six, I mean, the four S which is a, a dinky iPhone now was state of the art. And that mm-hmm. image stabilization was huge for quality and it just yeah. got better over time. But um, there's no stabilization for moving front to back. It's always up and down and left and right and everything in yeah. between of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, who, who knows what they'll introduce with the next line of phones, you know, uh, uh, now the, the in-body stabilization when the, with the 12 pro and that came out, they said that the 12 pro max does something like 5,000 adjustments per second to compensate for it, <laughs> movement and stuff like that. So you know what I think about that? <clears throat> that's 5,000 more problems than the uh, previous model had. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I can't think of anything else to say about the wide camera. Um, I know this kind of sounded more like uh, a show about all the cameras, but I think it's only fair to compare the wide with the other ones just to kind of show um, what it does and what what kind of look you get with the wide. And, uh, uh, you know, I think we tried to... Um, give some examples of why you would want to use the wide as opposed to the other ones. And yep. um, I don't know. All uh, of them have their pluses. All of them have their, their, their minuses. But if you yeah. understand which one gives you the best image for what you're looking for, it's great to have those options. And yeah. I, and I hope that people, will uh, recognize the flaws in all of them so that they can be, they can be used for good instead of like, Oh, my head's fat or, or, <laughs> or other stuff like, why do I have a, a, a inverted cone head, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they all definitely have their, their merits and their faults and everything else. So, you know, experiment with them. Play around with them. I mean, if you have a phone like a ten R or uh, an SE that only has the one camera, then you, you know you're pretty well limited to that type of image. But um, you know they have the zoom, and you know you digitally Absolutely. zoom with them and that. But um, I rarely recommend that. I, I think if you want to if you want to zoom in, use your feet and walk up closer, <laughs> unless unless you just simply can't do it. But um, uh, prop, prop to zoom is sometimes is okay. Just don't go hog wild. And, uh, and yeah. you can see how uh, Apple fills in the gaps of what's missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I still <clears throat> I really, I, and if you were a follower of tiny shutter, uh, I said this years ago, I wish Apple gave us the ability to turn off the image stabilization in our phones. Uh, and, yeah. and what is the, uh, what's that other feature that they do? They, they have a digital image stabilization where they basically will create part of the image so that it looks clear. I don't know if it's a sharpening effect or, or, or what, but I wish that they would allow us to turn it off. But the reason why they don't is because somebody will turn it off and say, my phone is broken. And yeah, or they'll yeah. say, uh, Apple's Apple uh, iPhones take terrible images. When no, it's the dummy that's holding it is taking terrible images. So th- I understand why they don't do that, but I wish they could secretly give us a way to go and and turn some of that stuff off because I would, you know, my 4s. I think, I think it might have been the five that was the last. The five or five S was the last. Uh, great iPhone to be able to get natural images, if you can call digital images natural, mm-hmm. natural yeah. images without them helping us make better pictures. Yeah. Yeah. If we could turn off 
things like deep fusion, uh, you know, that that's something that you just can't turn off in the newer phones. Um, you know, you, you could probably get some more natural looking images. So uh, unfortunately, we're, we're stuck with them, you know, it, but it's the 90 90 rule, right? They're going to please 90% of the people 90% of the time. And yeah, we're the minority. <laughs> yeah, we're we're the we're in that ten percent who want to be able to do these things, but can't. And uh, you know what? It's either put up with it or get a traditional like a DSLR or something and use that. But not not me. <laughs> I'll, I'll put up yep. with it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, all right. Well, I think we got ourselves a show, Joe. Tell us everybody where they can find you. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, I have Instagram. Uh, I don't post anything on there. I don't know why. I think it's just my, uh, (laughs) it's my behavior of wanting to go against the grain. Uh, but, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Joseph Ferreira. Uh, if you want to check out some of those videos that I'm doing with missionaries, my pastor is, uh, hosting, uh, it's called The Harvest, but it's on the Faith Assembly uh, YouTube channel. And uh, you can see how I'm able to utilize the uh, the iPhones in creating different scenes. So uh, one instance, Pastor will have a camera up like I have right now pointing to me, but then I'll have one off to the side to show him as as a sort of a profile view while he's talking to uh, missionaries, mostly on Zoom, because a lot of them are in other countries. And uh, we had a few that we did, a couple that we did um, in person, but I was able to kind of uh, do that setup. So if you want to find that, look for Faith Assembly, The Harvest, and you will find that on YouTube. Cool. I'll put a, a link to that in the show notes, um, both on on the YouTube video and on the uh, the, the audio podcast. Um, <clears throat> you can find me on Instagram at McMillan Photo and on Twitter, McMillan underscore photo. Um, Dave, who couldn't make it tonight, uh, you can find him on Instagram at ProfPod on Twitter. I think he's ProfPod on Twitter as well. And um, uh, he always likes to say that on Instagram, it's for photos, and on Twitter, it's general screaming and hollering about anything else. <laughs> Chaos. So, yeah. Um, so we do this show every two weeks, and um, uh, again, this this we're starting to do video, and you know, it, it's it's a work in progress. So you know, bear with us on that, and we will try to make everything look and sound as good as we can. Um, Let's see here. Uh, The podcast is available just about anywhere where you can get a podcast, uh, Anchor, um, Spotify, the Apple Podcast app, Google Podcast. um, uh, Go to the website, iPhoneography.ca. There's a link in the show notes. um, And you could see different places on the right-hand side of the webpage where you can uh, find, find the podcast. Or just do a search for iPhoneography and it hopefully will show up. Um, this podcast originated from, uh, a, a community that I host called the Artful Iphonography Community, and it is on MeWe, which is kind of like Facebook, but not Facebook. It's a little more better, private. Hi, um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you can find it at artfulipc.club and, uh, there all, there'll be a link to that too. And, um. Uh, Joe, I really appreciate you stepping in for Dave. Um, yeah. He has family in town and he, he wanted to see them, so he couldn't make it tonight. Um, and, uh, you know, it's fun. Get always always fun talking to you and catching up. And, and uh, yeah. you know, your, your insights are, are wonderful with the, when it comes to this stuff, especially the video stuff, which I don't do any, uh, not enough of anyway. I had anyway. to do it by necessity. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is so true. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, thanks again, Joe. And thanks again, everyone, for listening. And uh, catch us on the YouTubes and and on your podcast feed. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.
，拜拜。